Hello viewer. <laughs> I say viewer because this is going to be my nichiest video ever. Um, but the people that watch it will be very, very happy. So the six people that are going to watch this are going to be delighted. Uh, basically, if you've got an Asus X205T and you can't get Windows 10 installed on it, no matter what you've tried, then don't worry, because this video will show you exactly how to do it. Because here is an Asus X205T with Windows 10 working absolutely perfectly on it. And it's a fresh install as well. So keep watching if that's what you want to do. So there are two main problems that are relatively easy to overcome. It's not the end of the problems, but there's two obvious ones. If you just go onto any other computer and make a Windows 10 USB setup disk, uh, so that USB stick, that will generally work with any computer you plug it into, except this one. <laughs> there are two problems. One, that processor, Intel Atom, I don't know how well you can see it, in the Intel Atom on this particular model is a 32-bit processor. It is not compatible with 64-bit operating systems at all. So um, you have to specify a 32-bit version of Windows 10. Not only do you need to do that, you also need to have the correct type of boot on the actual USB stick itself. You have to configure the USB stick so it's UEFI. Otherwise, this machine can't boot from it and setup can't start. All right, so let's fix those two problems before we go on to the next problem. So the difference between making a USB stick um, for general use and one for use with this Asus device is, um, is as follows. So um, go and get the media creation tool. You can download that. I've got a separate video on that if you need help with that. Um, and when it starts up, it'll say, what do you want to do? Select create installation media and click next. Now on, on this bit here, it says use recommended for, and you can see it's got 64 bit there, Windows 10, but if you untick it, what you can do is you can choose both. So this can make you a, a nice little universal sort of stick. So choose both and then do, uh, next or or if all you've got is the asus just use 32 bit but i tend to go for both because it's, it's a bit more versatile isn't it so click next and then uh choose iso file because we need to configure it especially later on so choose iso file and then click next and then say where you want it to go and it'll you know so we'll call that windows 10 give it a name windows 10 32 64 so it's a, a dual one click save and then it'll get a few things ready what i'll do is i'll i'll speed this bit up and then we'll rejoin the action <laughs> um, once it's finished so now the stick's made we uh need to do the following so i'm using rufus here to do this and you can insert your memory stick it doesn't matter what it is as long as it's bigger than eight gig this is a 32 gig Kingston and you can do select disk or ISO and you click select and then you um, find the ISO file like this and click open. Um, now you want to have it as um, GPT EUFI, um, UEFI and um, if you make the file system NTFS and then click start uh, it will then create the memory stick now the thing here is that it's a UEFI boot non CSM compatibility support mode so it won't boot on legacy systems um, the X205 isn't a legacy system anyway it doesn't like legacy boots so you have to do it this way so you have to use rufus to do it if you try and just use the normal memory stick that you, know, you just burn it normally it won't um, it won't boot so choose ufi and then click start and then it'll make the make the disk and that's that's the one that you then boot from and then you then um you should get um the correct um, well it should boot for one thing and then you should get the correct option to choose 32-bit windows so you've got your USB stick and it's plugged in and you tap F2 to go into the BIOS. Um, 
if you go to the boot screen there, you can see that it says uh, Windows Boot Manager on this one as the top one, but you've also got UEFI USB. So what you need to do is boot from that USB like that. And if you've obviously if you've configured it as in the, you know, the previous part of the video, then it should now boot. So let's see what it does. So I'm just going to save and exit that. And um, we'll watch it boot. So it's going to boot. Finally, it's going to boot. I'm going to just tiddle it because it counts down. So what you should see is that, where it says Windows 10 Setup 64-bit, but you've also got the option to do Windows 10 Setup 32-bit. Choose the 32-bit and take it to, you know, take it to start. So it loads the files, and what you'll find now is it will say, um, I'm going to work now because I'm a 32-bit processor, and, you know, it'll carry on as you'd expect it to. Um, except there is one <laughs> really annoying thing that happens now. Uh, the actual uh, motherboard has an Intel chipset on it, and the keyboard and mouse, well, touchpad, the keyboard and touchpad are integrated into that chipset. And if the chipset drivers aren't installed, you don't get a keyboard and mouse. Um, so guess what? Even though that starts, there's now no keyboard or mouse. There's no keyboard or touchpad at all. So it's like, ah! So um, what you have to do now is you have to get yourself a USB mouse and plug that in because the USB ports work fine. And the USB mouse works fine. Get that out of the way. So now I can use a USB mouse to go through to the next stages of the installation. When it comes to anything involving a keyboard, you can use the accessibility options to bring up the on-screen keyboard. So when it's about entering the user or anything like that, um, you can do quite a lot of it with a proper keyboard once the um, USB stick's been finished with. But during the setup, it's only got two USB ports. So during the setup, you can either sort of switch the keyboard now, or you can use the on-screen keyboard. So just go through the normal stages of the setup, using the mouse for as much as you possibly can, either with the on-screen accessibility keyboard that appears on the screen, or swap out the USB keyboard. Right? And then what will happen next is that we get to the um, to Windows. So um, I'm going to go on this bit because this is important because you can do an upgrade um, but I prefer a full one so um, you can delete all the partitions that are there just delete them and then click next and it will set itself up okay I'm not going to do it on this um, because it's going to complain about hard drive space being available because it's only a 32 gig EMC so you, you'll have to delete everything anyway just to let it install I expect so delete all the partitions, click go, use the on-screen keyboard with the USB mouse or click in and out with a USB keyboard and a USB mouse. And then the next stage is what will happen when we get to the desktop. So once the desktop is loaded and Windows is finally installed, you'll still notice that you don't have a keyboard or a touchpad. So you're still using the USB one. Um, but because the USB stick is now taken out, you can plug in a USB keyboard um, or you can carry on using the on-screen one, it doesn't matter. Um, but uh, we're sort of part of the way there. What I then did was I went to the drivers page and I downloaded a whole load of drivers. There is a, uh, there's a link in the description for the actual page you go to and it's this link here and you can see um, you can choose the operating system and you can choose Windows 10 32-bit and and there you go. So uh, the ones I downloaded are the following file names. So I've installed these ones. I've installed the ATK package for Windows 10 uh, version 1000 and then 50 at the end of it. Uh, there's the Realtek Audio, more on that in a bit. Uh, there's the chipset Intel Bay Trail X205 TA Win 10 32-bit. That's Once you've installed that, 
then you get the touchpad and the keyboard on the actual device working itself. Smart gesture I installed as well. Um, that means you can do sort of funky stuff with the touchpad and gestures and things. Then there's the um, TXEI Intel drivers there. I put those on too. And that bottom one there is the BIOS. Now, <laughs> why is the BIOS one there? Well, what you might find is that you don't get audio. So if you've got gone through all of this and you've got Windows 10 installed and you've got all the drivers installed and suddenly you've got no sound, that's a BIOS thing. So if you update the BIOS to version 213, um, I'll put a, a little video on next to show you how to do that. Then when you restart and install those drivers, then your sound magically works. And then that's everything fixed. So if you need to update the BIOS because things don't work according to how I've described it, this is how you do it. You go to the Asus eBook X205 TA um, product support page and you can see there's driver and tools. There's a link in the description for this. If you go down a little bit, you see it's BIOS and firmware. So you click that. I don't know how well you can see it, but um, you should be able to follow it. And what it will do is it will list one option version 203 that isn't the one um, i installed if you do see all downloads you'll see there's one there called version 213 so you download that because that's the one i've got installed so you download the 203 and then you copy that onto a fat 32 formatted usb stick and then you'll be able to select it in the bios so let's just look at that now when it boots, tap F2 and you'll go into the BIOS. Um, the keyboard works in the BIOS, ironically. So then you do start easy flash on the advanced menu and then it will start the flash upgrade utility that's built into it. And you can see here that um, it spotted the... Um, it spotted the... the USB stick that I put in. FAT32 USB stick. And I can go into that folder there and you can see there's the BIOS that I've copied onto it there. So you press enter on that and it will flash it. Don't power it down. Um, now this actual one is the version 213, April 23rd, 2019. Uh, and then let it flash and then let it restart. Load the defaults, let it restart again and then you should be good to go. So all being well, you should um, now have uh, an Asus X205T that actually <laughs> that actually boots to Windows 10 like this one is. So uh, yeah, so in summary, you need to create a Windows 10 32-bit UEFI bootable USB setup stick. You then need to use a USB mouse to run that setup because you don't get a keyboard or touchpad. Then you need to um, plug in a USB keyboard or use the on-screen keyboard uh, and go and grab some drivers. I'll put a link in the description so that you can go straight to it. I'll also put a list of the names of the files that I use in the description as well so that you can just copy and paste that and check you've got the ones that are the same ones that I've used. If you don't get sound, you'll have to update the BIOS. And after you've updated the BIOS to the 213 version that I installed, then you get, then the sound works. Uh, and then that should be, um, then you should have a fully functioning laptop. I mean, it's only 2014, so it's not that old. And it has got a solid state drive in it. It is a very small solid state drive. I mean, let's not be under any illusions. Once Windows 10 gets installed, you do get uh, 10 gig free. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> now there is. Uh, we'll we'll look. At, I'll, I'll while we're here. Um, if you stuck with this video this long, then you're gonna. You know, you, you might watch it till the end. So if I'm gonna do view, and I'm gonna go to options here, and I'm gonna do view, and you do show hidden files and folders, untick hide extensions. And then you also untick protected operating systems, high protected operating systems, and then click apply and the whole lot of stuff appears. What you notice is that there is a hyper file there of 400 meg. So if you're not going to use it, if you're not going to hibernate it, you can get yourself another 400 meg of space. 
And the way you do that is uh, by turning off hibernation. And that's quite easy to do. And you, you can toggle it. If you get issues, you can toggle it. So open up a admin PowerShell and then uh, type the following in. Once it gives me the actual command, type in power cfg space forward slash h space off and it will go nothing's happened except when you go to here you can see that the hibernation file is now gone so if i want to reverse that because maybe i might get some programs that don't work very well i can just change the off to on and what you'll notice now is when i do that it hasn't done anything except it has because that files back so if you want to get yourself 400 meg of free space just turn hibernation off um, you can also reduce the size of the swap file the page file at the moment it's one gig you, i wouldn't have it i wouldn't turn it off but you could you could make that a bit smaller and get yourself another you know get yourself another gig make it 100 meg swap file and get yourself another gig of space um, also you can do things like see cleaner and you can tidy things up and yeah but 10 gig as a, for a little tiny laptop 10 gig is the space you get um so yeah hopefully that'll help as well if you've got any questions then just stick them in the comments i reply to all the comments generally um and i hope this video has helped you and um, liking and subscribing um it, it would be nice as well and uh, thanks for watching